On today's episode, I want to take a look at Photoshop's depth blur neural filter working with flower photography. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me today on this episode. I really love flower photography, and I do a lot of it. And what I really enjoy most is getting a nice, soft background to my images. That being said, I like to shoot with a very shallow depth of field. Like, I'll shoot around like f2.8 or maybe slightly above that, maybe 3.5 or something. But I want that the background to be out of focus. Now, when I shoot at those very shallow depths of depths of field, a lot of times I'll lose some of the focus on the flower. Now, you notice this image, the entire flower is in focus because I shot this at f16. So I'm starting to change my tune a little bit. I'm starting to shoot at f16 and using editing software to help me out. The software I really love to use is Topaz Mask AI to blur out backgrounds, and it does a fantastic job. And I've done videos on it, and I've recently done a video explaining why I'm shooting at f16. And and I'm showing you also how I use um, Topaz Mask AI to help me blur out backgrounds. So I'll link that video at the end of this video in case you want to go and watch that one. Maybe you don't own Topaz Mask AI and you want another way of blurring out your backgrounds. And there is a really interesting filter found in Photoshop. I'm using the latest version 22.4.3 and that is found under the neural filters. Now it's still a beta filter and it's called depth blur and it works pretty well and I'm going to show you today how we can utilize it for these type of images. Now it won't work on everything but it will work on a lot of different images and it works pretty pretty well and I think you'll be very impressed by it. I have three different images today. I have this image this image and this image here that I'm going to add uh, the depth blur to them. And you'll see what kind of results we get. And I think you'll be pretty happy with the kind of results we can get with that filter. And I almost forgot, I do have a fourth image that the uh, depth blur didn't work out so well on. And I'll show you the result I got. And also the result I got with using Topaz Mask AI. Because, again, that's the one I use a lot. So if you have images that this will not work on, Mask AI will do the trick for you. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this. Let me click on my first image. So here's my first image. Again, I shot it at F16, so every the entire flower is in focus. The background is slightly out of focus, but really not enough for me. So let's go ahead and come up to Filter come to neural filters which is right here click on that and when you do the neural filter will open up now this is cloud-based in other words it's an artificial intelligent filter and it has to go up into the cloud to process it and then it comes back down so it takes a slight amount of time it depends how quick your internet connection is as to how long it will take to process i have a pretty fast internet so mine process is pretty quick now you're going to find that filter depth blur under the beta section here so just click this little toggle and that filter comes up for you and you'll notice, hey, my flower is out of focus, which is not what I want. So what I'm going to do is, if you come up to this uh, thumbnail here, you see the little crosshatch here, and it says click to edit focal point. If I click right here in the center of this flower, you'll see this little uh, wheel spinning. That's when it's up in the cloud doing its processing. Now look, it's processed that image, and look, my flower is now in focus, and my background's out of focus. It's just that simple and it works really well. But you can, uh, like I said, you can use this cross crosshatch and click anywhere you want. So in other words, if I clicked on the background, give it a second or two to process, you'll see the background comes into focus and now the flower is out of focus. So let's go ahead and click back on the flower. Or you can click this and drag it and move it over here just like that. And again, a few seconds later, it will process. Now, there's some controls here. Uh, you have blur strength. If you want to blur the background out more, you can take the strength. And let's drag it the whole way up to 100% and give it a second or two to process. And that looks really good. But maybe it's a bit too strong. So let me go ahead and back off to maybe around a 90. I'm going to see what a 90 looks like. And give it a second to update. And now, yeah, I think 90 looks pretty good. Although I did like 100%. What do you think? I think that looks pretty good myself. I'm going to leave it here. Now, this next slider is called focal range. Now, think of this as depth of field. When you move this slider to the left, you're decreasing your focal range. When you move it to the right, you'll be increasing your focal range. Now, in this image, it looks good. I'm not going to touch it. If you needed to, you could get more focal range by moving it to the right or less to the left. 
Now, the focal distance you notice is grayed out because I've used this uh, focal point right here. Whenever you use the focal point, this will be grayed out. If you don't use the focal point, in other words, if I hit this remove focal point right here, the focal point goes away. And now you'll notice this focal range is checked on and now my image is out of focus. So now I have to find the focus spot and I'm going to pull this into the left till this flower starts to come into focus. And you could do it that way or I find it easiest just to click on the object that you want to be your focal point. Just It's just a little simpler and I, I think that's the easiest way to go. Now you'll notice you have another slider here called haze. Now this haze only deals with the out of focus area. So if I drag this haze to the right, watch the background start to get a little hazy look to it. And sometimes that can be kind of beautiful like that. See that little bit of haze got a little bit of a dreamy quality to it. And you know what? I might just leave a tiny bit of haze in that background. Let me drag it back. Yeah, just that little bit of haze right there looks good. The next slider is called warmth. And it's only for the out of focus area. So if I drag this to the right, I can warm up the out of focus area, give it a second or two to update itself. You see that? Or if I move it to the left, it'll start to cool off the out of focus area. So it'll kind of get onto the blue side. But I don't want that. So I don't, and I don't want to warm it. I'm just going to put it back to zero. Now the brightness is, is the overall brightness of the image. And saturation is the overall saturation of the image. Now, normally, if I'm going to work with brightness or saturation on the entire image, I won't do it here. I'll do that back in Photoshop. If you want to see a before and after, see this icon right here, just give that a click and you'll see there's your before. See how ugly that background looks? Now look at your after. Did a beautiful job and I really love that out of focus background. But the cool thing is, being the fact that I shot at F16, I have my entire flower in focus, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Now, all we need to do is send this back to Photoshop. So let's come down right here. See where it says output? There's a drop down menu. Click this. Now we have different options. We can output it on the current layer, a duplicate layer, a duplicate layer masked a new layer or a smart filter. Now, I generally like to use the uh, duplicate layer masked. And the reason being is because it'll put it on a duplicate layer and it'll have a layer mask in case I have to fix anything. So that's the method to my madness there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and that'll send us right back into Photoshop and you'll notice here's my image with the layer mask. Now if I click the eye here, here's my before and here's my after. And the reason I like the layer mask is if some of the flower, like you'll notice around the edge of the petals is slightly out of focus, but I think that looks okay and it, it looks really natural on this image. But if I wanted to bring these edge edges back into focus, all I have to do is paint black on the layer mask and I can paint that right back in there very simply and easily. So that's why I like to use the layer mask. Okay. However, I think it looks good. Again, here is the before ugly background. Here's the after does a great job. Now on to the next example, and that is this image here. This image I think was shot with a long lens, if I'm not mistaken, probably around a 200 millimeter. So I'm getting a lot of compression in the background, a lot of out of focus area, but I wish it was slightly softer. Not much more, but a little bit, and I think the neural filter will get it for me. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's come up to filter, and uh, let's go to the neural filters. And we'll click on depth blur again. And let's just click right on this B right here, right in this area right here. Give it a second or two. You see that little spinning wheel. And now it's processed. Now right away, already that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Is it too out of focus? Let me, let me pull back on this a little bit and see. Let me just see if I'm going overboard here. Yeah, that may look a little more natural. Let's click this before and after right here. Here's the before and here's the after. But see that little extra dreamy look to the image, a little bit more out of focus. Maybe I'll give it just a little more blur. Let me just drag this to the right just a little bit more. Let it update itself. And I like it. And uh, what about a little bit of haze? Let's try some haze in there and see what that looks like. Here's the haze. Now, nah, I don't like the haze. I'm just going to drag that off. I don't think I want to warm it. I think it's good. I mean, it's really a simple uh, filter to work with. I hope you agree with that. 
If you're wondering about this output depth map only, you can output this as a depth map, and it's basically a mask that you can use in other filters in Photoshop, like the um, lens blur filter. You can use a depth map uh, mask for that. So you can output a, just a mask if you want to. I generally don't do that. I'm just going to do my blurring right here. But that might be a great subject for another tutorial. I'll output a depth map and we'll use it in maybe that lens blur filter. Now, let's go ahead and I'll put this back into Photoshop and I'm gonna use the same duplicate layer mask. I just use that all the time, just in case I need that layer mask and click OK. And that'll send us right back into Photoshop. Now here is my before and it looked OK, but here's my after. It's just a little less busy back there. I like how these white areas back here and these white flowers are a little more softer, a little more toned down compared to this. They look a little more intense. So I like that toned down look and I think it looks really great. And now on to the next image, which is this one right here. This is going to be a fun one. And you may say, well, what the heck are you going to do with this today? But you'll see it's going to be cool. Let's go ahead and go back up to filters, neural filters, and let's see what the neural filter can do on this. I thought the neural filter could help this image out because the background's a little bit out of focus, but for my, the way I like things, not enough for me. I like more out of focus in the background, so I thought this might be a really quick fix to blur out that background. So let's click on depth blur one last time here. And now let me go ahead and we'll let it update itself. And this area is out of focus right here. So look, let's just click the area we want in focus. We can click anywhere we want, but let's click right here and give it a second or two to update itself and see what happens. But look how that background went out of focus. Isn't that beautiful? Now that background's out of focus. This area's in focus and your eye comes right in here. And I think that makes for a beautiful image. Now let's see what happens if we give it a little more blur. And give it a second or two to update itself. And yeah, that little extra blur, that might be a little too much. Let me back it off just slightly. I like it. I don't think it needs any haze or let's try some warmth back there. Let's try to warm it up and see what happens. Give it a second or two to update. And that doesn't look too bad. I kind of like it. Uh, let's go to the cool side of things and see what happens if we cool it down because there is a lot of coolness in this image already. Man, I don't like that. So I might add warmth, well, not haze, Dave, warmth. So let's go back to zero and see what it looks like without any warmth back there. Looks pretty good, but let me just give it a slight amount of warmth, just a little tiny wee bit. Right there, I think just a little warmth, maybe just a smidge more, boy, I can't decide. How about this? Let's see what happens. Okay, I think that looks really good. So let's click here. Here's the before. And here's the after. What do you think? Isn't that an improvement? Let me know in the comment section below what you think. But I think it really improves it. So if you have these kind of images out there and you just want that background blurred a little more, I think you're going to really enjoy this depth blur neural filter. I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be a filter I'm going to use a lot. But again, if you have Topaz Mask AI, it's great for certain things. Now, my next image is I'm going to show you where this filter fails on us. But let's go ahead and send this back. I'll just choose my favorite duplicate layer with a layer mask attached to it. And uh, click OK, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And here is our before, and here is our after. I'm pretty happy with that. And now let's go to our last image here. For this last image, I've already sent it into the depth blur neural filter just to save some time. And let me turn this layer on. Here's my result. And it looks nice. I got a nice blurry background, but I don't like the foreground as much. I wish these flowers were out of focus. And to do that, I use my old standby, which was Topaz Mask AI. And here is what I got when I used Topaz Mask AI. Let me shut this layer off and turn this on. So I was able to isolate this flower and these leaves up here and blur that background out. So for something like this, I needed to use Topaz Mask AI. Now you can use Photoshop too, you can use the quick selection tool and all this stuff, but to me Mask AI is so simple and so easy to use. So there are my results. So again, here's my first image, here's the before, and here's the after. Here's my second image, here's the before, and here's the after. Here's my third image, this is the before, 
And this is the after. And here is the last image. This is uh, Topaz Mask AI. Here's the before. Here's the after. And here is the depth blur. The before depth blur and the after. But there you have it, everyone. That was the depth blur neural filter. Give that one a try. All you flower photographers out there, I think you're going to like it. But can you just use it in flower photography? No. You can use it in wildlife photography. You can use it with people. You can use it for anything you want. And the cool thing about it is it lets you pick the focal point, which is really great. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.